Hi there, I'm Black Bright and this is part two of whether or not women are to blame and I'm reading a letter from T who was responding to my video called How to Heal the Fatherless Wounded and what T is saying is I'm going to repeat it in this video just in case you're watching it independent of the first video. Um, Black women, sorry, what you're talking about is the breakdown of the black family leading to today's fatherless epidemic. As a son and father to six children by three women, by now I have a degree on the matter. The law was set for us to fail and unfortunately we played right into their plan. Black women were led down the garden path to think that the law think that using the law to free themselves from the responsibility of having a child's father was going to gain anything. In the world today, we don't see any other race of women as lonely as the black women. You see, she stripped herself of her legacy. I know people who say she single-handedly brought down the race, and I have single-handedly witnessed this through mothers and grandmothers. Black women are the only women who have been unanswerable to no one. For the past four decades. She's been bearing children and not interested in, in the man whose seed she bore. Totally against nature. Often bearing seeds by many men, laws were put in place to back her having your child and then kicking you out. To invite the man in next door and then she took pleasure exercising her specially tailored right. Today's youth are now the result. Boys who lack real testosterone because of it. They were not grown in any condition to nurture future terrestrial levels because they died inside a thousand times already whilst growing up in the care of a mother alone. Each time she abandoned him for a current partner over the years or abused him. I blame the grandmothers who told their daughters to view black men the same way as she did, causing history to repeat itself at a more detrimental level. Gone are the days when black love was on every corner, prospective partners waiting in every local blues dance. Now, someone else's plan has gained strength and the stakes have changed. So that was uh, the letter from T to which I responded. Uh, the first part was, um, are women, black women to blame? And this is our black women to blame part two. And I'm focusing on the part of his letter that says no other race is as lonely as black women. I think there's a perception that black women are lonely. I mean, I know there's some people, there are black women who are lonely. There's black, there's people of all races that are lonely. Not only women, but men are lonely. So I think that's a bit of a generalized statement anyway. So it doesn't carry much weight. But I think what he means is that black women are alone which is totally different because alone and loneliness are two different things one is a choice and the other isn't and if black women choose to be alone it's a choice and some of them prefer to be alone than to have to deal with the pressures and um, of a relationship that's unsatisfying and that is what has happened I mean, you know, you do get, I, I just think, you know, a lot of um, men may not have been raised right. I think men love boys. They love boy children and they try to protect them and they keep them and they spoil them and they never quite equip them. A lot of them never quite equip them to go out there and um, raise a family or have a woman. And so these men were let loose on the streets and they didn't have a clue. And these are the same ones who are feeling hurt because their mothers didn't train them right. That's my just my opinion. Because you do have men out there who have been who has whose mothers are wise and who have raised them to be good providers and good men. So this isn't a blanket thing, whether they're black or white, whatever colour they are. I mean, this man happens to have, has dated outside his race and he's got mixed race children. So he obviously, um, I don't know if, he, if he's even been with a, 
a black woman or whether he's just making this statement just because because I'm sure he did say that he's got three children and they're mixed race well he said he's got six race six children so I'm not quite sure if some are mixed race and some are black I'm not sure didn't go into all of that anyway um uh, what was I going to say? Oh, he said something about black women are uh, the only women who have been unanswerable to no one for the four decades. I'm not quite sure what that means. Why would they not be answerable to anyone? Everybody is accountable to someone. I mean, it's not like we can go around the world doing anything we like. Everybody's accountable. So that sentence doesn't make sense. What I do think is that when women, well, like my mother always used to say that if you find, uh, she used to say a Jamaican, a Jamaican will, all he wants to know is that you're in the bedroom and in the kitchen and they want you barefoot and pregnant. And I think what's changed is also is that when a woman had a child, she was tied down. She could do anything. She couldn't go anywhere. And she was just, you know, she, you know, the, the the child tied her down. And on top of that, w men wouldn't even look at a woman who had a child. So it's changed. And what happens now is that men are taking women with children. When women have children, they're still working. They're still going out there. They're still enjoying themselves. Children are not holding them down like first time. If a man gets a woman pregnant, and you know how men don't like to wear condoms, and I mean, it's the woman's responsibility. I mean, she used to wear the pill, use the pill or whatever she used to take, whether it's IUD, but that doesn't protect her from infections. But they, they, so a lot of these men don't even want to wear a condom. And then they have the audacity to blame the woman when she, when she doesn't want his child, when she didn't plan for it. I mean, you know, I think they, they're living in a time where people were very irresponsible. And I believe back then, it's a bit like, you know, when um, people just used to get married to stay in the country. It was a bit like that. Women would have children to get a council flat. They didn't think about the future. They just thought, oh, I want a home. I want to leave my parents' house. And it was easy to get a council flat back in the day as long as you had a child. So that's a, most of the reason why women had children, really, if we want to be honest. The man was inconsequential. And that sounds awful, doesn't it? But that is how, you know, the women used to what do. That is what the women did. I'm, I'm fumbling here because it doesn't sound very good. But anyway, um, what else have I got here? I'm going to see. I'm, I'm skimming over that part. But yeah, um, but I still believe. Yeah, put that down. I still believe that if a woman had a, a, a child for a man who was responsible and supportive, she wouldn't have to have gone to that extent. But men were not in that position. Like I said, a lot of the men they were living with their parents, they were looking for somewhere to live. And the thing is, a lot of these men that um, left the roost because the woman, when the woman got pregnant, they was glad that she was able to have a council flat so they could come in and, and, and stay for weekends or whatever it was. So they, they benefited from it as well. So they make it look like, you know, the woman um, just left them, got rid of them, had a kid, got rid of them, and they were benefiting. A lot of those men were benefiting because then they would move in out of, their, out of their mother's yard and into the girl's yard. That's what they used to do. And then they used to find themselves in the woman's yard and not doing anything. And just, you know, going down the road to see my brethren. And all that kind of crap. You know what I mean? What is that about? And then they have the audacity to be peed off. And then, you know, women now have made a stand and decided, look, I prefer to be alone than to have somebody who's a burden. And that is a situation. So I don't know where he gets off about no other races as lonely as a black woman. You know, those women are not, there's a lot of women out there. They're not lonely. They would love to have a partner. But they want a partner who is responsible and who will, you know, who adds value to them. A lot of them, they're not even interested in, you know, all this rampant sex hunting. 
They just want somebody who they can communicate with, you know, they can discuss um, books with, programs, their day. You know, that's what women want. They want the companionship. But if that companionship turns out, because a lot of times you'll get somebody and on the surface it looks like they can offer that. They can offer you companionship and you have something in common. The next thing you hear them say is, oh boy, you know, I'm going to lose my job or I don't, you know, I want some money. Lend me some money, you know, and all this kind of crap. And you're like, oh no, not again. You know what I mean? You think you've left all of that stuff behind when you were 16, 17, 18, 20. And you get 50 year old, 60 year old saying, boy, lend me a boss fair now. Lend, lend me a, a, a tree pound, lend me a five pound, lend me a ten pound, whatever it is. And you're just like, what? A big old hardback man like you, just because you see a woman is working, you see her as a meal ticket. And then you wonder why the woman ain't alone. Anyway, I'm not even going to go into this again. I just wanted to address that part of his letter. Um... Yeah, so I've answered that. Oh, yeah, there is. He did make an important point. Um, what is the impact of changing partners on children's lives? I mean, he didn't say it in those words. He was more or less saying, oh, this woman, she's got different kids from different men and she's going with the man next door. I mean, you can tell he's bitter and he's hurt. And I don't know what woman did to him. But, um, yeah, I think it's important when you've got young children. You, you don't let them see different men coming in the house. I would think that, you know, if you're dating someone, you date them for about six months to a year and don't involve your children until you know it's something serious. But even then, you know, things happen. You cannot guarantee that something is going to work out fine. You might end up introducing them to your children after six months to a year thinking, great, I've got a lovely relationship. They don't even like your kids. And they find your kids an intrusion or in the way or rude or, you know, and then they feel as though they can't say nothing. And then boof, you know, you're starting all over again. So, you know, this situation where changing partners in children's lives, you know, the parents would have to talk to the children. Hopefully they're old enough to understand if it's young children, you know, really keep any kind of pet person out of the way so that child is not um, adversely affected but you know it's that kind of thing children need stability of course and they don't want to be taught they shouldn't be introduced to all and sundry um, that's not good at all um, yeah so I think I've addressed all aspects of this gentleman's um, letter and, you know, I do welcome your views. You can either put them in the comments. I don't really look at the comments too tough because sometimes there's just too many of them. Or, but, you know, if you have a topic you'd like me to discuss or you have something to write to me about something in particular, please do write to me at blackbrightnews at gmail.com. And I just want to thank you all for your responses, for your letters, for subscribing, for sharing. And, yeah, that's all for now. Bye-bye.